Hey, this is Malcolm341. In this video, we're going to look at why Preserve UVs never works in Maya. Preserve UVs is a huge time saver, but can be extremely frustrating. So let's get into it. So first, if you're not familiar with Preserve UVs, what it does is it allows you to move verts and automatically adjust UV mapping at the same time. To turn on Preserve UVs, you've got basically two ways to do it. So the first way is you can come over here to the Tools panel and double-click the Move tool. And then when the, whoops, when the tool options pop up here, you can go down to this guy right here and turn this tick box on preserve UVs. Alternatively, uh, the way that I actually like to do it is if you hold down W on the keyboard and also hold down left mouse button at the same time, it'll bring this little um, context menu up here. And if you go straight down, you can turn on preserve UVs right here. Um, and so this is a pretty quick way to do it. So you turn it on there. And then you do the same thing. You hold down W, hold down left mouse button, and then you can turn it off. So turn it on, turn it off. So let's take a look at what the tool actually does so we can see why we care about this. So basically, I've just got this kind of simple road model, section of road here that I've modeled. And uh, it's got two textures on it. It's got a horizontally tiling road and a horizontally tiling sidewalk. So uh, open up the UV editor here so you can have a look. So there's the sidewalk mesh there, and sorry, there's the road mesh there, which goes down into there. I just moved it out of the way uh, for UV mapping so I could see what I was doing. And so normally when we go, we've already UV mapped a section of this, right? So if we go here and we right click and we select verts, and then we go and select some verts here, normally what happens is if we move these verts, the texture gets squished and it looks all crappy. And then we'll have to go back in and like retile it in the UV editor or whatever. Uh, and same thing this way. If you pull it this way, the texture gets stretched and uh, you have to go back in and re-UV map it. So if you change the shape of your road or whatever model you're working on, basically you have to go back in and adjust the UVs after you've done your kind of modeling change. So here's the magic. Okay, so hold down W, hold down left mouse button, turn on preserve UVs. Now do exactly the same thing. Scale it down, or sorry, drag the verts down and watch what happens. It actually eats the UVs. Instead of bunching up and getting skinny, it actually eats the UVs or extends the UVs. So now watch this. Here's the really magical part. So preserve UVs is on, and I'm going to drag the verts of the road, and watch this. It actually retextures the road for me as I drag it out. Instead of getting all stretchy and shitty looking, it's actually preserving the UV ratio of what's in there. So as I move the verts, it automatically tiles the texture. So you can kind of make your road go on forever and have the perfect UV mapping. So this is really handy when you've already laid out the UVs for something and then you want to adjust its shape. It's really powerful for level artists as well. Let me just quickly get back over to here. So uh, maybe you want to come in here and uh, pull this out. You need to widen this for level design or something. And so as you pull it out, it'll actually adjust the UVs for you. So you can even you don't have to do it in a square, right? You can do it into any shape and it's going to auto basically correct the UVs for you there. I think it also works with scale. Yeah, it works with kind of all the transform tools. So you can kind of do whatever you want. That looks pretty trippy, actually. So now you're thinking this has just changed my entire life in 3D. I don't have to worry about UVs anymore. And it's magically just going to come out perfect. Extrude stuff, do whatever you want. Then you come over here and you bring your prop in and you select your prop, grab some verts or whatever, and you pull it out and yeah, it's preserving UVs. This is awesome. And then you release and boom, disable the preserve UV options to continue with this edit. What is this crap? Why doesn't this work now? Why doesn't it ever work? Like, why can't I ever use this tool? I always go into this tool, I drag some stuff and it's like, no, it doesn't work. You can't preserve. You're not allowed to. Don't even try. This tool never works. So the reason this tool never works is because of overlapping UVs, and I'll explain what that means. So I've just got a box here, and uh, let me just load up my tool here to turn on the checker stuff. So basically, what's going on here is I've got my UV layout, and I've got preserve UVs turned on. I'm going to select my verts here, and as I drag this, you'll see the UV editor over here updates in real time. That's how the tool works, right? As you drag it it updates. And so this is cool. All the checkers are scaling. And then I release and it gives me the error. And so what's going on here is that when I pull it, because I'm pulling all of these uh, verts and UVs at the same time, and they're all welded together, eventually they will overlap. 
right there. See how it's like turning purple where they overlap? So when it turns purple and they overlap, it fails. I guess it doesn't like that, doesn't know what to do, or it doesn't support it for whatever reason. So for example, if you were to pull this out right to there and release, it works fine. This part's going to be all wonky, though, because it has no UV space. So let's just undo that. So basically, um, the tool has a limitation. It's an awesome tool. It works really good for like ground geometry and stuff like that and some types of architecture and stuff. But when you get into more complex UV layouts that can have like overlapping, basically, you have to use a workaround. And the workaround is you would separate this face temporarily or I think cut the UV shell. So let's check that out. So basically, we know the overlap is going to happen here. So I'm just going to right click, go to face, hold down shift and right click, and then go create shell just to like tear that out. So I've turned that out now. So now it's not going to get squished and do the weird overlappy thing. So let's try again. So I'm just going to grab these verts here and I'm going to pull. And that even though these guys overlap, they're not creating the red overlap. There's somewhere for the UV space to go, I guess. And now it works fine. So I can continue like pulling this out or whatever. So basically, what you want to watch out for is you want to watch out for like an impossible UV layout, I guess, like there was no space for this, it didn't have anywhere to go. So it I guess the tool just like fails. Let me just undo that. Undo, 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 undo. Okay, so the other trick that you can use is that might not be appropriate, you might not want to separate uh, the UV shell out and move it over that just might not be possible in your model or it might be too much work or something. So the other thing that I like to do is just select the face, I constantly do this and then just separate that into its own elements or I just have a little button over here that runs the separate command for Maya. So now it's a separate um, mesh. And that's a separate mesh. And that effectively does the same thing. So if you wanted to leave the UVs exactly where they were right there, they're mapped perfectly, but you wanted to use the preserve UV tool, you could separate it temporarily, do your edit. This might be a little bit funky. Do your edit that you like there. I'm just gonna grab that guy. And then just pull that guy and snap him back together and just weld and combine and weld him back in. So see, it's still overlapping. But because I left the space there, the tool had somewhere to actually extrude those kind of UV border edges. So let's try that same technique now on our um, UV mapped barrier or whatever. So I'm just going to turn that checker back on there. So uh, same thing. So let's select the vert. So they've already selected from the previous selection. And um, when we pull these out, you know, there's some lots of red stuff going on there, which probably indicates there's not enough UV space and there's overlap and pinch or whatever. Really, we're just looking at this area. This is the only area that we care about extending and this area and this area is going to travel along with it. So in this case, the UV map is like way too complex, like I said. So again, we'll just use that trick. So it's going to select all of those faces, just grab those and then hold control and drag those to deselect. So I just have that edge basically. And then same thing, I'm going to go and I'm just going to use my hotkey, but that would be the equivalent of going to what is it? Edit mesh. Sorry, I haven't done this in a long time because I got so used to the button. I actually forgot where all the menus were in here. So uh, edit mesh. And then we want to do extract, I believe. Right. And extract. Oops, go into object mode. Yeah, perfect. So extract makes it a separate mesh, right? So uh, now that I've extracted that little piece there, let's go back into vert mode. Those verts are already pre-selected from the last selection. And let's try pulling it out and see what happens. And as you can see, if you look over to the UV editor, sorry, I can't move the mouse over there at the same time. Um, you're not seeing that weird red overlap, except for that piece that's upside down on purpose. So again, now I can preserve UVs as much as I want. It just keeps uh, scrolling out correctly. And then if I deselect that guy and select that piece back there, center the pivot. And then you'd, you know, snap the pivot up here and snap it back in and uh, stitch it back together, blah, blah, blah. That's how you could do something like that to extend the preserved UVs on, on a shape like this. Of course, this wouldn't work on this particular prop because it's unwrapped and it's all normal map baked and you don't really want to tile it. 
But uh, if you're working on architectural assets that use trim sheets or tiling textures, this is a super powerful tool. So in the end, the tool is super powerful, but it has some limitations. I still use it whenever I can, and hopefully it will be less frustrating for you now as well. Thanks for watching, everybody. Without viewers like you, this channel would not be possible. If you like this video, please purchase something from the online store. Each purchase goes towards creating more video content and keeps the channel ad-free. See you next time. Have a world-class day.